next I would like to invite on stage Ivy Saint Laurent. As this is a kiki night, welcome Mother Ivy Pedrosa. <laughs> Um, also, I am not sure, um, yeah, everyone's here. I would like to um, have Magia 007 on stage. <laughs> and then also, surprise guest, uh, would like to invite uh, Sky Old Navy, Vermanai. <laughs> who joined Ballroom in 2009 and used to be part of the House of La Beja and then Amazon and then formed their own house in 2021, Vermanai in Mexico. So give a round of applause. Does everyone have a mic? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it on? Is it on? Is it on? Okay. Hello. Is it on? Is it on? Okay. So, um, thank you so much for joining us, for joining me. Um, I want to start with you and maybe ask you, what do you think mainstream society's idea of what a non-binary person is and how far away are these ideas from your felt reality? Um... Hi everybody, how are you? <laughs> um, I think people, I mean, non-binarity is relatively new for the, for the pop culture, you know, like it's been there since forever, but people are really like, we are fighting to make space for, for bodies like, like ours now. And um, there's a, like a, for me, there's a slight, um, um, how do you say? When, when major culture look at us, they wanna see andro androgeneity, you know? They think like, okay, a non-binary person needs to look like that, an in-between body uh, which is very complicated because uh, androgyny is a static. Androgyny is not a gender identification as non-binary, right? Because me as non-binary, I'll be looking fab like this. <laughs> but then sometimes you're gonna look at me on the streets and I'm gonna be looking like a, like a bro, you know? <laughs> I shall not open my mouth though. <laughs> but I'll be looking like one, you know, like, and um, I think for me, you know, like, and what I would love to see that people could, uh, that people could make space for non-binary bodies to express, to, to feel and to be however they want to present, you know, because if I really want to present as, uh, as, as, a, as a girl and call myself a cis person, you know, I'm talking about everybody, then, then do that. And the same way on the, on the binary, just live your life, but also let people live their, li their lives however they want to live, if they don't want to categorize in the binary, and uh, let them show whatever they want to show and serve wherever they want to serve, you know, just for me, it's, it's my freedom, yeah. Yes, thank you so much. So if we put this into perspective and put it connected to ballroom, um, okay, as a person, I really have to thank you because back in 2019, when we did the first edition of the Icons Global, it was actually you uh, who came up to me and demanded a non-binary performance category, which I think back in the day, I, I'm not sure anymore how it was. I think it might existed at a few kiki balls before, but it was not like a steady, and uh, for sure not a major. And it was actually you who approached me and said like, okay, honestly, <laughs> we need to do something. So maybe you could like explain again to all of us a little bit more like um, 
in context why it is also important, especially in ballroom, to forge a way for these categories and like what made you approach me back then and um, yeah, why is it still is important to you? Okay, okay. so. <laughs> um, yeah, so when it came to non-binary people in ballroom, I had this feeling that, I still have it, that there's this perception of non-binary people being cisgender people, but who dress a little different, or maybe even not, you know? And then it's just like, as if it's just some word that you, you know, you just put on. Um, they didn't realize that these statistics apply to non-binary people too, you know? Like, um, people are trans and non-binary. People are trans and they're in between, or they're just not identifying as a man or a woman, and they're suffering the consequences of that. And they're doing it in their daily lives. They're not just, um, they're not just non-binary on Instagram. They're non-binary outside on the streets in the Uban, uh, at their jobs, or at school, and um, and they're being, you know, and they have, they they live what what they live, um, in a in a in a similar way to our to to binary counterparts, um, and I feel like that has been very disregarded within ballroom, um, where the only, like, it is a struggle that has to be visible, but at some point, it's only centered on the, the binary trans woman uh, perspective of, of violence, and yeah, then it, get, it gets kind of um, covered in that sense. So whenever there was talk about non-binary categories and stuff, it was kind of, it, it wasn't, there wasn't, a, a, there wasn't, a sense of seeing the need for it. Um, they didn't realize these are trans. Pe these are trans people. These are trans people with trans lives, um, and trans people need a space and ballroom. Um, and it was butch queen like it was butch queens who were saying, who were talking against it, who um, are still the main ones to like to speak against it. Um, so, yeah, that's I think my main aspect is just like. No, there weren't non-binary categories at the start, but maybe a lot of the people who were walking drags categories or walking femme queen categories or other other things, butch categories, maybe they would identify as non-binary if they had the information, if they were able to. Um, you know, I, I've even I've even talked to um, I'm not gonna say their name, but I've talked to someone from the states um, who you know, has a history in ballroom. And and they found out about um, what it means to be non-binary here um, when they came to a ball here. And they were like, wow, I think that's me. And imag imagine, imagine how much you could save yourself from um, if you just had that information. That's why we need that in ballroom. They need to know, people in ballroom need to know that it's just not one way to be trans or to be queer or to be to be a man or a woman or anything in between um, because there's such a pressure, especially for trans, trans youth, to look a certain way. I see, like I feel the pressure. Um, I know other, I see trans girls have the pressure. Even like binary trans women are gonna, are gonna have a lot of that because we uphold so much of the uh, binary aesthetics that they feel like they have to get every surgery, have to Photoshop every picture and like um, take the highest dose of hormones. You know, so yeah, I think does that answer the question? <laughs> Very much that. Thank you so much. <laughs> so um, my next question will go to Sky, and for that I would like to. Um, so Ivy did something very beautiful, which is still work in progress, but um, Ivy is working on a manifest um, to describe uh, non-binary experiences and um, how uh, non-binary categories and gender non-conforming categories should be um, judged in ballroom. Um, I mean, I read this manifest, was, which is still in the works, which I'm, that's why I didn't bring it. <laughs> um, but there's one part that like stands for itself, and if, I, if I'm allowed, I'm going to read it because I want to hear your thoughts on it. Um, so what Ivy 
wrote is, leaders need to be open to change when faced with criticism in order to create spaces for non-binary and gender non-conforming bodies where they can exist and thrive. Trans bodies like mine will not stop existing and when faced with the gender questions within ballroom, some will turn away from ballroom or even worse, look for ways to change their bodies and gender expression in ways that don't feel right to them just in order to be in ballroom. This can be extremely dangerous, and what you said just uh, nudged me back to that part that you wrote, and also from what we talked about. Maybe you can like elaborate like a little bit what that means for you and what that means for your scene and like how you feel about this. Yeah, well, um, can y'all hear me? Okay, yeah. I'm a soft speaker. But um, yeah, like I think for the majority of my time in ballroom, from like, yeah, like 2009, I mean, there was no, like, Lady Gaga had, like, just released her album. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> there was, like, no, you know, this was before, before Grinders, before, like, I was on, like, BGC, like, there were so many ways, shout out BGC, the icon, um, but <laughs> yeah, there was just, I would not see myself in any form of media unless that person was dead or they were in jail or they were strung out or they were being made to feel less than in one way, shape or form. And that type of person, whether they were more feminine presenting, more masculine presenting, just somewhere in between. There is a certain, there's a certain point in which I was entering this ballroom space where I was coming from the outside in, you know, ex-military, already just sort of being side-eyed by everyone. Like, okay, it's a butch queen, but not really, but if you just put your hair back this way, you will immediately win that trophy. I see you could be a legend one day if you do this, if you do that, if you do this. And from the very beginning, I, was pl I had all these expectations placed onto me under the guise of someone saying, I see this for you. I see this for you. I see that for you. I never had any real autonomy from the beginning over which path I could take. And as whatever path I chose to take, it would be disappointing to one leader or another that I was around, the leaders that I was around. So when I look back on that time, this was in like in the Midwest US um, ballroom scene, like Chicago, Indiana, Kentucky, um, Tennessee, Ohio. But then going over to New York, there was a specific nuance in the way the leaders um, try to encourage you to do certain things in ballroom but when it came to how I actually wanted to present where like I was so young I was 19 not really knowing if I was trans this or I didn't know about non-binary anything until maybe like 2012 but I just knew that I was not that I knew I was not this or that thing and I was constantly disappointing somebody in the scene. Like many icons, legends, pioneers, they're like, listen, I've been doing this since Paris is Burning. I didn't know about Paris is Burning. I was a baby, I was a child. And there came a point where one of my friends who was not in Barham was this straight, um, straight black woman. She um, saw me essentially getting yelled at at a, uh, at a bar. Um, and she was just like, do you have any idea what happens outside of these walls, outside of ballroom. Ballroom is so much of a bubble and we can get trapped so easily into what we see online on the runway, but that's not ballroom, that's a ball. A ball is the place, the ballroom is the people, right? But if if as a leader, you're only focused on what happens on the runway and not what's happening 
immediately after when you're on the way home and your new child that you just recruited to join your house and win you this trophy, how much are you going to take care of them if they don't win or if they're not deemed when you want them to be deemed or they don't get this status or they don't do this or that thing. They don't have any clips, no good moments. They're always getting chopped. I was one of those babies that always got chopped. And the leaders just sort of, you know, in a way sort of gave up. They gave up and I was discarded in a way. But that's how things start, but that's not always how things finish. And things did get better. And now I'm in this position that I'm in now. It's wonderful. I, I think that there are so many ways in which we can turn that pain into purpose. But turning that pain into purpose for people who are not trying to be femme queens, who are not trying to be, you know, to fit in this binary presentation. There aren't really leaders that have existed up until very recently who will encourage that path, who know how to guard against, you know, what they need to guard against. But in ballroom, that's not exactly rewarded because ballroom is so binary. Mm -hmm. So the question is, you know, it's like, what do we do? Where does it start? But in so many ways, like, I think Gen Z is really good at being the generation of like, you know what? Thanks for your input. <laughs> but let's take it a bit further. But let's go. You know, let's take it a bit let's further. Go. You know, so thank you so much for this manifest that's in progress. Like, yeah. it's important. And however flawed it may feel like in your head, it is exactly the red pill that some people need. And they've been waiting for, praying for. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I just want to invite um, non-binary people to write me on my Instagram, on my email. If you don't have it, come at me. Let's talk about it, because I want to share with everybody. There is non-binary in ballroom, so you can have this material, but also question it and maybe add to it. Uh, you know, So we can have a cohesive statement that doesn't come just from me because my expression as non-binary is not, it, it's mine, you know, but we need to also get together if we want to make this work in ballroom. Yeah. Thank you. The last thing, thank you so much. Like, it's, I did not expect to be sitting up here with a microphone in my hand. I arrived to Berlin like 48 hours ago, like recovering from my jet lag and all those things. There's a certain type of, um, I guess like a, a supercharge, like an afterburner energy that I'm feeling by coming to the ball yesterday and now hearing about this fi finally, like an active push towards non-binary, non not visibility, not, not non-binary representation, but non-binary um, power and authority, but from a place not not designed from shame, but from a place of strength and a place of actual autonomy that is not dictated or assigned value by any capitalist system. It does exist. And since I live in Mexico, I am so happy to hear that there's other people like me who are designing infrastructures so that non-binary people can exist and thrive. There's all sorts of manifests similar to yours and similar to mine where all you have to do is not be afraid to ask and contact contact me contact like there's there's a way instagram is more than just the clips there's also the dms and you can use those dms for all sorts of things but asking is very difficult and we know that it's difficult so please like you can message me message all of everyone who is about to be on this panel in this discussion in this space we are here for the community yeah, yeah. so um before i ask other people on the stage i want to turn back to you since you were so young when you joined um the community 
and your voice was so important, especially for the scene here, to talk about non-binary bodies, gender non-conforming identities in ballroom. And it was said already that some things are changing, some things have changed. But just like to sum this up, where do you think we are now? Like what has changed and what is still like missing? Like to like sum it up. <laughs> You're like, cha. <laughs> Where are we now? I don't, I feel like it's a little hard because we had the whole Corona thing, so it kind of like had a little cut. Um, it's also I kind of because I was walking down binary categories, and uh, recently I made the decision to um, step into the femqueen categories, so I'm a little I'm a little distance from it now. Um, so. Yeah, <laughs> um, the last, that yeah. I feel like things are changing in general here in the German ballroom scene especially. Um, there's a lot more trans people in ballroom. Like back then it was just like, you could count us on your hands. Um, but now we're more and we're also like, it's, it's, it's young trans people who are, who have a voice and are like using it. Um, I just think it's important that the German ballroom scene listens to these voices. Um, but I think change will follow from that, especially. Um, like, there's so many trans kids that are, like, in the works. <laughs> like, um, you've seen some of them pop up at the balls, but a lot of other, a lot of ones you haven't seen because they're coming to Tigati and, um, you know, and it's, it's, it's a lot, <laughs> there's so many. Um, and that's just gonna that's gonna change ballroom so much. Yeah. It, it is. The demographic is changing, and so just like the politics are gonna change, and the you know the people talking are gonna change. So I just think that ne it needs to adjust like that. Um, and I think. Yeah, like I think uh, Parisa is also doing uh, great work. She's also she also has her own uh, documents um, about non-binary categories, specifically non-binary face. Um, Parisa has been uh, representing non-binary face uh, all over Europe. Um, she uh, she they they, they they even won uh, non-binary face of the year um, in 2019, I think. Um, so like. There's there's multiple phases to it now, and I just think you know it's step by step, um, and like we mentioned uh, backstage, like some issues like in the process, um, how there are with with non-binary categories, and that's happened multiple times. So with each thing, it's a little bit like I'm I'm very careful about it. Um, like I remember um, in the Netherlands there was Lion Babe, Sex Siren, and it was a great intention, <laughs> but it didn't get there. It wasn't what we actually needed, in my opinion, because it did, it also made sense for their scene more than it would for ours, because in the Netherlands, uh, the demographic of the non-binary people is mostly like AFAB transmasculine, and here the non-binary people we have mostly trans femmes, so. Um, for them, they opened on uh, Lion Babe Sex Iron, which was for butch women and for non-binary people to serve like a masculine kind of sex iron. And like, okay, now non-binary people are mentioned in a category, but then they're being like, um, what's it? So gleichgesetzt, <laughs> like set, like uh, put as a, put equal to um, butch women, and then the trans people. Who are non-binary, basically being you know being 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 um, gendered. gendered, and um, people are are just gonna see you lion babe, and they're they they'll make assumptions you know about them, and um, and like the problem was very visible to me when um, it was it was the Africa Ball Part Three, I think, that where um, Charlie. Wanted Thorn. Thorn is 
the non like the lion babe sex siren like um the most established person in that category has won so much and they are a trans non-binary person um they've even like i'm not not to be like trans medicalist i'm just saying they've even undergone like medical transition um and then they are the face of that and charlie saw that and wanted to put that in his ball in paris which was crazy because paris was not really acknowledging non-binary people or categories like that and then we we have we have the ball and then there was an interview by Kendrick Mugler and then it was asked what is that i saw that this is on the categories what is it and then charlie said um or charlie and vinny they said it's a sex and category for masculine women and he's like what <laughs> but like i know that the reason you got this was from thorn and then and then and then suddenly okay we wanted to make a space for non binary people but the non binary people are completely invisible now and being gendered and then the response to there being this like masculine um side to the non binary sex iron was now we have to make a, ma a feminine one <laughs> and then we have a masculine non binary category and a feminine non binary category <laughs> for sex iron <laughs> and then you're like well <laughs> So it's basically feel a figure about figure but like I don't know <laughs> with different haircuts I don't know <laughs> <laughs> So So I think um when it comes to this the the most um What's it called? <laughs> like nachhaltig. I'm so Germanized. <laughs> so <laughs> sustainable. Um, <laughs> uh, the most sustainable solution, in my mind, for these kinds of categories, they need to be explicit. They need to be explicitly for the group that we're mentioning. Um, we need to talk about what that group is, but like it has to be whether it has a different name or it has this name, but non-binary sex iron. Because what are we playing around? You know, just make the category and then see who comes. Non-binary face, you know, or non-binary performance. Um, back then, it happened a few times where it was like non-binary versus butch queen, or non butch queen and non-binary, and I was like, yeah, you could decide if you were butch queen non-binary or female figure non-binary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If, if I may, like in in Mexico. Um, there's, well, not just Mexico, actually, in a growing, an increasingly growing part of Latin America in general. It's like, well, I think, 23 countries, I think 23, 24. I'm, I may be somewhat off there, but um, I've been privileged enough to be a DJ in nine of those countries. And there's a certain type of face that people make when the when the MC calls for um, like femme queen performance okay and then there's non-binary face and it's done with this sort of like eye roll like a side eye and Everybody else, you just see people just sort of like the energy just goes down. And as a DJ, like you, you know, you work in you work in energy, right? <laughs> You're sort of like an energy worker. So I'm up here on the stage, and I just see people just like, hmm, okay. <laughs> and I was I said to myself, okay, so maybe I think I've seen enough now. I want to fix this. I want to fix that because. I'm seeing the same type of face, the same type of like, you know, vibe destroying, like there's vibes, but then there's also like, no, I want to see myself. I came here to see myself like trans women, amazing trans men. I love it. But I, you know, I won't measure up to this. I won't measure up to that. And there are these kids speaking to me in Spanish because I don't understand. I did not understand a lot of Spanish back then who were just like reaching for just any sort of way into this community. But couldn't really figure out how. So I went on to like Microsoft Word and I said, let me 
do this little ball type thing. And I made these like four categories, four or five categories that did not mention anything that had to do with traditional ballroom. So like, in, for instance, like Sex Siren, I called it sensualist. And sensual is more, it's so like, yeah, you're walking, sex, you can like be on the runway feeling sexy, but more so it's sexy where you show cons- like sexy that is consent informed and sexuality that is based more so in how you are as you are and it's more of like a tag team thing and the same thing goes for performance there are many different ways in which i'm making a ball where gender is not a part of the equation where categories are not a part of the equation and it's a work in progress just like anything but it needs feedback it needs input and it's a google document now and like it's it's open to anyone to look at it and i invite all of you whoever gets this google document pass it around share it tell people to and encourage people to like make little notes on it and then create something do something with it like it's open source, I guess is a better way to say it. <laughs> like an, an open source ballroom concept, yeah? Because um, it is time. It's time. Like, there's no reason why this shouldn't have happened, you know, a while ago. But here we are now. So let's go, guys. Yeah? Thank you so much, all the three of you. For... Can I add something? Yes. So I was thinking about the last few years and about the Paris thing also. And I think there needs to be more, like we have, I think in Germany, we have a more established communication between generations now, like maybe now, maybe not so before like in a couple years ago, but now we do, especially cause you know, we have like Kiki Lounge and stuff like that happening. But um, I think there needs to be more conversations with leaders in other countries as well um and that these leaders also talk to the community because i feel like there's you know there's um there's this they're like leaders deciding and then they're and throwing balls and making categories but then uh, and they know that they're okay there's people but then they don't know why or what um like maybe we here have a better idea of what non-binary means um, which I don't even think is, I don't think, I think we still need to work on that. Like, okay, what does it even mean? Uh, talk about what th- that with, to the community. Um, but then the leader, they don't know, um, what that is. And then we expect them to, to ca- make balls that cater to non-binary people. Um, and then they have no idea. Then they write a category and it's a category that non-binary people did not even want. So... I think we need more we need more education when it comes to this. We need we need trans people to be given more platforms like this. Um trans youth especially. Real quick add And to leaders it. need to hear. Exactly. Paris needs to hear. And also it's like there is uh, like people like leading like these movements of non binary movements come to us and ask Avoid to go to to a baby that is just trying to understand their, you know, their boundaries, uh, their gender within ballroom. Avoid to to bash them with questions that are not gonna add to them. You know, you know, like come to leaders and ask. We are a net that is at some point you're gonna reach us. You know, to ask because I also feel like. A lot of the, the the complications comes when you say like, As, okay, so you are non-binary, you don't even know how to answer about this, you know, when the kid is just like on their first ball, you know, and I'm like, hold on, you know, hold on, just like read the room, read the room, read who can give you the, the information. Also, when I want to ask something about ballroom, I know who I'm gonna ask. So it's time for you to realize that there are also non-binary leaders between us. Okay, we are not, well, there it was always, but now we are like, we're here. Ask us. Yeah. Thank you so much, the three of you. Thank you so much for sharing, for being honest.
Um, as they said, get in touch, get in touch, ask questions, connect. Um, a big applause again. And I would like to now switch the stage up. And um, there was something very important um, that Maria said uh, at the end uh, when they said we need to, um, if we, if we put this in a perspective of ballroom, we need to talk about and have also a better understanding since our scene is very young, it's only 10 years, and we need to have a better understanding of the history of certain things, why they are the way they are, what they were informed by, what is even the history of these categories and why did they exist, and also like in a context of like where they culturally came from. So... <laughs>